thousands of parcels and tens of thousands of letters. Comforts and greetings from home for the boys over there. They all have to pass through the army post office. And at this time of the year, they're pretty busy. Yes, the army post office has to deal with them all. But how quickly they get through, or sometimes even whether they get through at all, depends largely on how much care we take at home in packing and addressing. So on that subject, a few hints from the chief of the army post office, Colonel Lane. Going through the letter office here and taking from among the various letters items which are no doubt Christmas greetings, I find <coughs> incompletely addressed items in great numbers. For instance, here's a letter just addressed, Private W. Holman, care of BEF. Even our fair friends <coughs> are not completely addressed because I see a letter addressed to Nurse Diana Evans, care of Army Post Office France. But addressing letters isn't by any means the biggest problem. It's when you get to the parcels department that the trouble really begins. And it isn't only how you send it, but what you send. So here too, Colonel Lane has something to say. Today, we should probably be sending something like 300 tons of parcels to our soldier colleagues in France. One of the greatest difficulties and heart-rending facts to us is the way in which parcels are packed. I should like you to see some of the examples here. Here is a bottle. At one time it had port wine. That is probably not only lost to the recipient, but it may have damaged other parcels. Here are the remnants of a bottle of pickles. Glass is prohibited. Fruit is prohibited. Here is a parcel of fruit. The apples are going rotten. The oranges may not stand the journey. The Army Post Office is the link between the battlefield and the home. It is working to serve you and the men of the BEF. So it's up to you to do your bit, to find out what the regulations are, and to make sure that everything you send will stand the journey.